Okay, so let's start with today's lesson. Yeah, all right. So before we start with today's lesson, I would like to spend a quick five to 10 minutes, okay, to give you a quick idea what we're going to do, okay, for your Form 5 syllabus. Huh? Okay, so today's lesson is actually the first lesson of your Form 5 syllabus. Uh, I'm not sure whether you heard the rumors or not. I'm not sure. Uh, there's a rumors. There's a rumors that your SPM might start as early as uh end of November or uh early of uh December. Okay. Let me know in the chat box. Do you heard about these rumors? Do you heard about this news? Okay, all right. So we don't know how true it is, but better we prepare for the worst. Okay, let's assume that your SPM going to start uh, as early as end of uh, November this year. Huh? So let's, let's, let us prepare for the worst. Lah. Okay, all right. So now, and what's the problem now? The biggest problem now is the time. The time is not sufficient now because you see, uh, when your school reopens somewhere in March, okay, your school will reopen somewhere in March. So if let's say your SPM, uh, let's say your SPM will be somewhere around, let's say November, uh, November or let's say December, which means that your trial exam, uh, your so your percubaan, uh, should be somewhere around September. Should be somewhere around September. So which means what? You only have seven months. Okay. You only got seven months okay, to prepare yourself to finish the whole syllabus, to finish the whole syllabus okay, and prepare you yourself for the trial exam. So the time is definitely super duper short, super duper short. So that's why today, when the class first started, I would like to fix your mind first. There are a few things that I really want you to get it right. Number one, for your information, I will start to do extra class, okay? For me, eh? I will start to do extra class starting from March, okay? Starting from March, they, they, I will do extra class already, okay? There's, there will be about two to three extra, extra classes per month. Every month, we will have about two to three extra classes, okay? So we have to do that because if we never do these extra classes, we cannot finish everything on time. Yeah, we just cannot finish everything on time. Yeah, because for my style, I not only teach theory, I spend a lot of time to teach you how to answer the question. So that's why we need a lot of time to, to, to really, you know, uh, go through all this lesson. Huh? So I will start the extra class as early as March. Huh? Starting from March, we will have extra class. So the extra class will go from March all the way to September. Yeah. Uh, so we will have extra classes starting from March all the way to September. That's the first thing. Second thing that I want I, I would like you all to know is this. Huh? So guys, I'm not sure how you study, not sure uh the lab the, 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 the way you study for your form four, but form four is form four. When you come to form five, you have to really change the way how you learn. When you come to form five, you cannot only do pure reading. Only read, read, and read. It's not meaningless, okay? So, so, sorry, it's not meaningful. Sorry, it's not meaningful. What if, if let's say you do, you keep on reading, 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 yeah? That's why in Form 5, you have to start doing good quality question. So, what do we mean by good quality question? Good quality question is referred to past year question, PYQ, past year question, and also some trial exam paper you have to a lot of people have a wrong mindset sir it's too early to do this we should finish the whole thing first then only do past year question no you can start to do the past year question as early as today even today you also can do what you should what how you can do it now if you go for internet there are a lot of those topical topical means they arrange the past year question they arrange the trial exam paper according to topic, according to chapter. So you can try to do the past year question for those topics you have learned. Example, 
you can do the past year question for form four, isn't it? You can do some form four chapters thing already. You can do it. So guys, please, please, please allow me to tell you, your time is really not enough one. When you come to form five this year, your time is not enough. So it make a big difference if let's say you decided to chill for another few more weeks or few more months. Then only you start to study hard. You have no time one. Trust me, you have no time one. So you have to start working hard starting from today. Not after one week, not after one month. You have to start really, really working hard from today. Because I, I'm not sure whether you know how bad is your situation. Now. I'm not sure whether you know or not. Your time is really not sufficient one. Trust me, your time is not sufficient one. So you have to really know how to manage your time. Yeah. And you have to start doing all these good quality questions. You have to. You have to. Yeah. That's why do you notice that during your form four, some of you you might think, hey, I seems I can understand the theory. When I listen to theory, like okay, I seem to be able to understand. But the result, the final exam result show me otherwise. Okay, I score very badly for the final exam, even though I thought I understand. So that is one of the biggest problem here. Okay, so you have to really, really, really practice on question so that you so that you know how to apply whatever thing you learn. Yeah, because a lot of students, the problem is what theory is okay, but application is terrible. Application is terrible. And I always say, what even worse is what for your batch? For your batch, what even worse is that you not even know your problem, okay? Because you don't have PT3 exam, right? You don't have PT3 exam. So you don't have a proper examination before. You don't undergo proper examination so that you not even know your level. Where is it? Whether you're okay, you're not okay. You yourself not even know that, yeah? So that's why... Why I want you to do this, all these good quality questions? Because when you do this good quality question, then you will know already, you will know exactly what kind of question you can do, what kind of question you couldn't do. Like it or not, you have to do it like this. Okay, you have to do it like this. Huh? Because I want you to know starting from the first lesson. Okay, not because I always get this experience one. Like now, SPM is ongoing, right? SPM is ongoing. I always get a lot of questions. Students come in very, very last minute, tell me, sir, help me. So I so I so I ask lah, what I can do to help you, sir. I know nothing. I know nothing. But the time is so short. The time is so short. So very, very hard for me to do anything to help you. Okay. So that's why I would like you all to really start preparing from the beginning of the year. From the beginning, start working hard, start preparing for it. Anything not sure, feel free to ask questions. Don't feel bad. Don't feel shy. Oh, you might be thinking, I might ask a very easy question. No, it's perfectly fine one, okay? You don't think that, oh, I ask a very easy question, other people will judge. Don't ever have that kind of mentality, yeah? If you feel too shy to ask the question in the public space, no problem. You can send me a private message, no problem, as long as you ask, okay? So I hope everyone can understand this. Huh? So I want everyone to understand all these things first. Uh, where to find past year question? Uh, internet got a lot one la. You just you you just type you just Google you just Google, okay. Topical past year. That's a lot. Okay, Telegram group a a lot. There is a lot of question. Yeah, you can you 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 can find it easily from internet. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay, so now, okay, so before before I start, guys, are you okay with these two things? Are you okay? I want to make sure everyone we have one aligned go you know that okay i will start with extra classes as early as much and i want you to start doing question starting from you know starting from march let's say yeah starting from march okay and then one more thing is that you have to constantly revise you have to constantly revise back your form four because what happened for a lot of students is what they are okay with Form 5 because Form 5, they keep on learning. Ma. Everything's still fresh in their mind. But Form 4, they didn't touch. So they might start to forget already. So it always happened like this one. It's always like student never touch the Form 4 thing at all until a few days before the exam. A few days before the exam, they will, they will try to read everything, try to memorize everything for the Form 4. 
But right after the exam, they forgot everything again. They forgot everything again. Wait until the next exam, repeat the same cycle all over again. Uh, if possible, don't do that. Lah. Yeah. I hope you can do your revision from form four from time to time, not waiting until your exam. Only do your form four revision. Guys, seriously, it makes a very big difference. You won't tire, man. Okay. You learn your form four, forget, then after that, forget everything. The next exam, memorize everything. Then after a few days, forgot everything again. Then the whole thing keep on repeat, 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 repeat. You won't feel tired uh, by doing all these things. So that's why I hope you guys can start doing your Form 4 revision from time to time. And always do a proper planning. Don't study by mode. Uh. Many students, they study by mode. Well, uh, today no mode. I don't want to study. Uh. Okay, wait for tomorrow. You won't have mode one uh, all the day. Yeah, If you always wait for the right moment. Always wait, right, uh, wait for the right mode. You won't study at all, and trust me. Yeah? So do your planning because you are not taking one subject. You are not taking two subjects. You're taking about, make, most of you take minimum maybe eight subjects, okay? Seven to eight minimum, uh, okay? Normal, uh, average, you all take about eight to 10 subjects like, normally, yeah? So you have to really plan, okay? Let's say every week, how many hours I need to allocate for Sajara? Every day, how many hours I need to allocate to study, let's say, physics. You have to really plan for it, not by mode one. Or oh, today got mode, study sejarah. Uh, tomorrow, no mode, uh, study this and that. So don't go by mode. You have to start doing some planning. And you must really have discipline. Let's say today, I set a, I set a target. Today, I must finish my chemistry. I, spend, I, I allocate two hours for chemistry. Then you have to follow your plan. Okay, you can say, oh, I, I study until one hour, I feel tired, I stop already, cannot. Okay, so all these things are very important. Huh? So why I want to tell you this, because this is the first lesson of your form four. Okay, this is the, this is the first lesson of your form five, sorry, my bad, form five. Huh? First lesson of form five. So you really need to know all these things first. Okay, and I know that even I tell you this, the, the one that really will follow this is less than 10%, trust me. Even I tell you all these things is important. The one that really, really, really will follow, like for example, the one will really go to do past year question, the one really do planning will be less than 10%. But I'm okay with it, okay? My focus is the 10% that willing to listen. That's it, all right? Okay, so guys, so allow me to ask a simple question, okay? So far, are you okay? Are you clear with what I am trying to tell you before we kick start with today's lesson? Are you okay? Can I? All right, good. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so now I want to give you a quick overview what we will learn, okay? Okay, your Form 4, there are total eight chapters. Uh. There are total eight chapters in your Form 4. Form 5 only got five chapters. Uh. Form 5 has lesser chapters compared to Form 4, but Form 5, the chapter is longer than Form 4. Example, you see? Your Form 5, Chapter 1 is called Redox Equilibrium. We will spend about four months okay normally i spend 20 to 22 lessons just to teach chapter one the first chapter alone we need to spend about 20 to 22 lessons yeah so chapter two is carbon compound about two months chapter three thermochemistry about one month then chapter four polymer polymer is a bit short the polymer normally about three lessons then Industrial chemistry, industrial chemistry approximate five, uh, five, five lessons around there. Yeah. So, guys, okay, so this is the idea. Okay, again, don't feel bad about it. I just tell you the reality. You will be fine. As long as you follow exactly what I ask you to do, you follow my class, okay, trust me, you will be fine. Okay, I'll try my level best to guide you through. But I only need one thing from you. I need you to collaborate with me. How you can collaborate with me? Anything you're not sure, ask question. Okay, if you don't want to ask in the Zoom class, you can send me a message afterward. No problem. But you really, really need to ask the question. I always mention, okay, in my class, maybe there are about 60 or 70 people. The one that always answer yes or no, this and that, maybe about seven to eight students. 
but another 50 over students never even reply, you know, never reply yes, never reply no, never tell me understand or not understand. So I have no idea what happened to these 50 students, whether you can or cannot do it. I don't know. So I'm not a god. I don't know. I, do, I, I cannot read your mind, okay? So I need your help to collaborate with me. Anything not sure, you let me know. Even you understand also, let me know, okay? Please, okay? please let me know. Please put yourself in my, in, my, in my situation. Imagine if you are me, you are the one who conducting the class, okay? You're asking the question, but at the end of the day, only a few students who are answering. So what happened to the remaining students who are not answering, okay? You have no idea whether they understand or not. So very hard, very hard. As much as I want to help you, but you must allow me to help, help you. So please actively interact with me. And like what I say, if you are too shy, you can send me a private message. You can send me a private message one. I really, really want you all to interact with me. Yeah? Okay, so let's start. Okay, so today, okay, we will spend about 1 hour 40 minutes, okay, to learn something about a new important concept, which is called redox equilibrium. Huh? Okay, I always mention, the first lesson is always the most important one. When we first started with one new chapter, the first lesson is always the most important one because it will set up all the basic, it will set up all the concept, yeah? That's why today, if you have anything or any concept you're not sure, please, please, please don't be shy. Please ask, okay? Okay, let's start with this, huh? Okay, this first chapter is called Redox, huh? This chapter, the name is called Redox, okay? What do we mean by Redox? Redox actually coming from two words, huh? Redox, huh? R-E-D-O-X. Redox actually is a combination of two words. The R-E-D stand for reduction. The O-X stand for oxidation. See that? Redox. Redox means reduction and oxidation. Okay? So if SBM asks you, what is redox? What if SBM asks a question this year? What is redox? Then how are you going to answer it? So redox is oxidation and reduction process occur at the same time. If you don't want to use the word occur, you can say take place at the same time. If you don't want to use the word take place, you also can say happen. Oxidation and reduction happen at the same time. Uh, so that is called redox. Huh? Redox means what? I have oxidation and I have reduction. These two processes happen at the same time. That's it. If this chemical reaction only got oxidation, don't have reduction. Is it a redox? No. If this chemical reaction only got reduction, don't have oxidation, is it a redox? No. Redox must have oxidation and reduction. These two processes must come together. Okay. Let me know in the chat box, everyone. Are you guys okay with what is redox reaction? Okay, so redox means oxidation and reduction happen at the same time. So some student will say, sir, some student will ask us, sir, Mr. Martin, does the sequence matter? Like in this case, sir, you write reduction and oxidation happen at the same time. Mr. Martin, can I write this? Can I write reduction? Redox is oxidation and reduction occur at the same time. Yes, the sequence doesn't matter. You can have oxidation first then only reduction, or the other way around. Reduction first, then oxidation. Perfectly fine. No problem one. Huh? Uh, not to say that you must follow bullet, bullet, or when I when I write reduction first, you must write reduction first. No, no such thing. Huh? Okay, so what is oxidation and what is reduction? This is super duper important. This is the most important thing in this entire chapter. So there are total four methods to determine oxidation or reduction. So which means that we will learn four methods. These four methods will help to tell us this chemical process is oxidation or reduction. Uh, so if I want to know the chemical reaction is an oxidation process or it is a reduction process, there are four methods we can use. So let me teach you the most important table. Okay. Okay. Uh, the notes will be sent Send to the group later on. Huh? All these notes, no need to copy. Huh? These notes will be sent to the group later on. Yeah? Okay, so now, guys. All right, so 
there are total four methods okay, to determine oxidation and reduction process. And this is very important. Huh? I teach you a very simple way to memorize. I teach you a simple way to memorize these four methods first. Huh? Okay, so this is oxidation and this is reduction. Okay, so you have four methods. The first method called oxygen method. Huh? We can look at the oxygen. Okay, the second method is called hydrogen method. The third method called oxidation number method. Oxidation number, okay. Later you will know what is oxidation number. The fourth method called electron method. Yeah, there are total four methods. Oxygen method, hydrogen method, oxidation number method, and electron method. Uh, we will go very, very slow today. Because I want to make sure you really can understand what is happening. Eh? Oh, I teach you a simple way to memorize first. Let me teach you a simple way to memorize. Huh? Look at the first letter. First letter. O and O. First letter. So they have same first letter, right? Both of them have same first letter. You put plus. O and H. The first letter is different. Put minus. O and O. The first letter is the same. Put plus. O and E, the first letter is different, put minus. Are you okay with that? The first letter is the same, put plus. The first letter, if they are different, put minus. So reduction, everything here, the balik, everything here go opposite. Okay? Plus, minus, plus, minus. So it becomes minus, plus, minus, plus. That's it. So this is the most important thing, this table. Okay? So this table, you must know. If you don't know this table, you just cannot survive in this chapter. I not even say getting A, huh? getting B. No, you just cannot survive in this chapter at all if you not even know this table. Okay? So make sure you know how to remember. Okay, we go one more round. Huh? This is oxidation. This is reduction. Let's say the first thing we look at oxygen method. We have oxidation number method, let's say, hydrogen method, and electron method. Huh? Same letter, plus. Same letter, plus. O, H, and O, different letter, minus. E and O, different letter, minus. Here, everything the balik. Come on, everyone, let me know in the chat box. Are you okay with how to memorize this table? Are you okay with how to memorize this table? Okay, so you need to know how to memorize first. Okay, so after we know how to memorize this table, I teach you how to use it. How to use it. Huh? Okay, the plus here stands for gain or increase. The plus stands for gain or increase. Let's say this chemical reaction, they gain oxygen. So when they gain oxygen, it is oxidation. Example, initially I got four oxygen. After that, I become eight oxygen. 4 to 8, oxygen getting more and more. So when I gain, you see, yeah? when the oxygen plus means gain, so it is oxidation process. Simple as that. Okay? Gain oxygen means oxidation process. Okay? Let's say, if I, if let's say the oxygen minus, minus means decrease. If the oxygen getting lesser and lesser, if the oxygen getting lesser, then it is a reduction process. Example, initially I got five oxygen. Now the oxygen become three. Five oxygen become three oxygen. This is, this is not 50, yeah? this is oxygen. Five oxygen become three oxygen. So when the oxygen from five to three oxygen become lesser, right? So when the oxygen minus, when you minus oxygen, so when the oxygen become lesser, so it is reduction process. Okay, I hope everyone can see. Yeah? Same thing, let's say hydrogen. So hydrogen minus hydrogen. Minus hydrogen means what? Hydrogen become lesser. When hydrogen become lesser, what is the process? Oxidation. Okay? When the hydrogen plus, plus means increase. When you have more and more hydrogen, when hydrogen increase, it is reduction process. Okay? So make sure everyone knows this. Huh? Okay, let's say I use a simple example for demonstration. We, we, go, we go through some question together. Yeah, we go through some question together. Okay, 
So these are some good quality questionnaire, uh, trial exam paper. So let's look at the trial exam paper. We do it together. Uh. Okay, I go to, I will do two questions together with you. And I want you to do two questions for me. Okay, on your own uh, later. Now, let's start with the first question. This question coming from Pahang. Uh. This is a Pahang trial exam paper. So why I want you to do this good quality question? Because if you keep on doing some reference book question, or maybe you do some textbook question, uh, maybe the question are too easy. Okay, I have seen a lot of students told me, oh, I can do all the question from reference book, but I cannot do, do the SPM. I have seen some students can do a lot of question from the textbook, but cannot answer SPM question. So when you really want to do the question, do some good quality question trial exam paper and pass your paper. Those are good quality questions. Why I say why I say good quality? Because they they set up the question in the right format. They set up the question in the right format. Okay, come, let's do this together. Which of the following is a reduction reaction? What happened in the reduction? So first of all, go for the, the table. Come, let's memorize the table again, everyone. Oxygen. Oxidation number, hydrogen and electron. Is okay. There are four methods. There are four methods okay, to determine oxidation and reduction. Huh? So this is oxidation and this is reduction. Come, let's do together, everyone. O and O, same letter, plus. O and O, same letter, plus. O and H, different letter, minus. O and E, different letter, minus. Okay. So here, everything, the ballet, plus, plus, minus, 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 plus, plus. I hope everyone know how I get this table. Huh? You must able to produce this table. Okay, now they want reduction. So reduction focus on here, reduction. So reduction, they say gain oxygen. Yes or no? Look at the oxygen. Oxygen. For the reduction here, what happened to the oxygen, everyone? Minus. Minus means lose oxygen, lose, not gain, right? Lose, so it's wrong. B, gain electron. Okay, look at electron, everyone. Yeah, okay, reduction is here. Electron is here. What happened in the electron? So reduction, the electron, what happened? Plus, plus means gain, right? Plus means get electron, gain. So gain electron is correct. So the answer is B, okay? Anyway, let's look at answer C. Lose hydrogen. Yes or no? Let's look at it. Huh? Let's look at it. So today, this is hydrogen. Lose hydrogen means minus, right? Minus means lose. So when we are losing, when we are losing the hydrogen, what is the process? Losing hydrogen should be, you see, losing hydrogen should be oxidation. But this is reduction, right? Not oxidation. So it's wrong. Donkey, increase in oxidation number. Guys, oxidation number increase means plus. When the oxidation number increase, it's supposed to be oxidation process. But we are not looking for oxidation, right? This question is reduction process. So that's why it's wrong. The best answer is B. Okay, everyone, please let me know in the chat box. Can you see how I solve the question using the table? Let me know in the chat box. So the table is very important. If you can memorize the table, then is everything is easy. But if you cannot memorize the table, you cannot. That's why I keep telling you the table is so important. If you can't even understand the table, you will you will not able to survive in this chapter. Okay. So we always hold. Okay. Okay. I get a question. Is it always the same table? Yes. This is the one and only table here. The table won't change one. It's always the same thing one. Okay, next one. Huh? Malacca question. Which of the following statement does not correctly describe the reduction? Huh? Be careful. Huh? So you all have to read the question carefully. Some of you, they, you, some of you guys are extremely careless one. Read question also can read wrongly one. Some of you. So you have to read the question carefully. Does not correct means they're looking for the wrong answer. They're looking for the wrong answer. Huh? Okay, so now, so reduction, everyone, let's do it, okay? Oxidation and reduction. So four methods. First method, oxygen. Second method, oxidation number. 
Third method, hydrogen. Last method, electron. So, plus, plus, minus, 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 plus, plus. I uh. hope everyone know. Uh. Don't memorize. Uh. Follow the first letter. Don't memorize blindly. Many students just try to memorize answer. Don't ever do that. You will suffer a lot if you memorize the answer. Because if you memorize the answer, once the question change a bit, they make it k bar a bit, you, will, you cannot do already. Okay, come, let's do this question. Okay, so loose oxygen is what? Okay, so they say, does not correct describe oxidation reduction. Does not correct describe reduction means something wrong. Something wrong, huh? okay? So oxygen, when you lose oxygen, that is reduction. So lose oxygen is reduction. This is correct, but I don't want correct. I want the wrong answer, isn't it? So gain hydrogen. So when you gain hydrogen, hydrogen, when you gain hydrogen is reduction. So this is reduction. I don't want reduction. Lah. I want does not correct. So cannot. Okay, this is correct. This is correct answer, but we cannot choose because we don't want the correct answer. We want the wrong answer. C lose the electron so lose electron electron when you lose it should be oxidation so should be oxidation so they ask you the wrong answer for reduction so correct no the best answer should be c hope everyone can see yeah i hope everyone can understand this if you're not sure please ask huh? it's a super 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 easy question actually yeah it's a very easy question come guys your turn okay your turn to do one huh? okay now I want you to try this question. This is a question from Joho. Huh? This is a question from Joho. Which of the following is a reduction process? Come on, everyone. Take a piece of paper or using your tablet. Write out your table first. Come on, everyone. Draw the table first. Okay, everyone. Come on. Draw out your table first. Then put in your what? Oxidation, reduction, oxygen method, oxidation number method hydrogen and electron here you put yourself then find the answer for me which one is reduction come on i hope to see at least 10 answer in the chat box can i get it can i see can i get more than at least 10 answer in the chat box okay good i see a lot of you answer a a lot so far i only see a in the chat box no other answer let's try and see whether it's correct or not huh? come on so, same thing everyone want to do, okay? So, O and O, same letter, plus O and O, same letter, plus O and H, different letter, minus O and E, different letter, minus. Here, everything tabale, minus, minus, plus, plus. So, now we are looking for reduction process. Huh? Chlorine molecule gain hydrogen. Okay, gain hydrogen. Hydrogen is here. When you gain, gain means plus. Gain hydrogen, it's reduction process. A is absolutely correct. A is a good answer. Yeah, I hope everyone can see. Yeah? Okay, come on. Good. One more question for you. One more question you all try to do for me. The next question. The next one. Come on. Which of the following process is true about reduction? What happened during reduction? Come on, try this. This is a Selangor trial exam paper. This is a trial exam paper in Selangor, okay, 2022. So which, what happened during reduction process, everyone? Okay, good job. Okay, I can see majority of you answer it correctly. The answer is B, uh, gain of hydrogen. Makes sense, you see? Hydrogen, when you gain it, so it is a reduction process. So that's it. So these four questions are super easy, provided you know your table. If you know your table, this question, this question is easy. This question, this question is easy. If you know your table, lah. but same thing, if you don't know your table, nah, you know that you will struggle, lah, isn't it? If you don't know your table, you know you will struggle a little bit here and there. Okay, so we are done with the first part. Lah. Okay, so let's go on to the second one, lah, the second part. Okay. Because like what I said, chapter one is super, super long, really long, okay? Let me, I, I just show you a preview, the notes for chapter one, huh? chapter one, huh? starting from here, huh? 
Okay. Starting from here, I zoom out. Look at here. Okay. Chapter one. Uh. Chapter one. Chapter one. Chapter one. Still chapter one. Still chapter one. Still chapter one. Chapter one. Chapter one. Until here. Okay. Until here. Okay. That's all for chapter one. Okay. You see, I zoom out already, right? Zoom out already. That's how much chapter one it is. But again, don't get frightened by me. You'll be fine. You will be fine, okay? Because I'm not asking you to, to, to learn everything one day, right? We are going to spend 20 lessons in this. You will be fine, okay? You just go on with me. You will be fine, yeah? All right. And one more thing. Oh, one more thing before, before I move on, just to tell you, from five chapter... From 5 chapter 1, this chapter is the hardest chapter in your entire chemistry. It's the hardest chapter in the entire chemistry. Okay? Come. So let me bring you back. Okay? All right. So now I will already teach you the first concept. Okay. Back, 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 back first. All right, here. Okay? So we already teach you what is redox. Okay. Uh, I get a question. How long to finish the form five syllabus? Uh, my plan is to finish the whole thing by, uh, September. Okay, my plan is to finish the entire form five syllabus by September. Uh, and we we need approximate fifty lessons to finish form five syllabus. About fifty lessons. That's why we will do extra class starting from next month. Yeah, we will do extra class starting from next month. So we will spend approximate 50 to 52 lessons to, to, to cover the entire Form 5 syllabus. Yeah, all right. So next one, okay? Okay, so now today I will go through these four methods. I will choose three methods to teach you today. I will start with oxygen method because it is the easiest one. Then I will teach you hydrogen method. So these two methods, I will spend about 30 minutes like that, 30 to 40 minutes to teach you. Then we will spend about 40, 40 to 45 minutes in oxidation number method. Okay. I won't teach you electron method for today because if I teach, you will feel super confusing. Yeah. So today we just learned three methods enough. Huh? So as long as today, when the lesson completed, you know what is oxygen method, you know what is hydrogen method, you know what is oxidation number method. That is good enough for today. Yeah? So that's it. Okay? So every lesson, we have some small target to achieve. As long as you achieve my target, you are, you, you are good. Yeah? You are okay. All right? Come, let's start with the first one. Huh? So the first method that we will learn today is oxygen method. Same thing. I want you to pay full attention. Because if you understand oxygen method, it will help you for other methods as well. Okay, so for oxygen method, what we need to do, we need to focus on the gain or the lose of oxygen. So we want to see whether the oxygen getting more or the oxygen getting less. Yeah, oxygen method focusing on oxygen. We want to see we get more and more oxygen or we get less and less oxygen. So when you want to do all these methods, no matter oxygen method, uh, oxidation number method, uh, hydrogen method, or whatever it is, no matter what method you are using, uh, no matter which method that you are using, you must always do apple to apple comparison. Okay, you must always do apple to apple comparison. Okay, so guys, what do we mean by apple to apple comparison? So apple to apple comparison means that you must always choose the right pair to compare. You must choose the right apple first. You need to choose the right apple before you compare it. Okay, how you choose the right apple, everyone? First one, always choose one apple from the left and one apple from the right. Okay, one from the left, one from the right. You cannot choose two apples from the left. Cannot. You cannot choose two apples from the right. Cannot. Must be one apple from the left and one apple from the right. Okay, later I'll teach you how to do, no worry. Next one, always choose something that is related. Huh? The apple you choose, they must be related. They must have some relationship. Okay, later I'll show you. And be careful with the sequence. 
So what do we mean by be careful with the sequence? When you want to do apple-to-apple -apple comparison, always compare left-hand side to the right-hand side, not the other way around. You cannot, you cannot compare right, go to the left. Cannot. Must be always start the apple from the left, go to the right. Okay, no worry. I'll use a few examples to show you. Okay, then you will understand better. Huh? Okay, like, come. The first example, everyone. Okay, the first example. Huh? Magnesium plus copper oxide become magnesium oxide and copper. Okay, don't memorize. Huh? Don't memorize this example. No need to memorize one. I just want you to know how it works. Okay, come. Now I will teach you how to do oxygen method. How to use oxygen method in this question. So you, to use oxygen method, first and foremost, you need to do apple to apple comparison. Huh? Apple to apple comparison. So to do apple to apple comparison, you need to choose one apple from the left and one apple from the right. Okay, let's start with the first one, everyone. Let's say left hand side, I choose this apple, magnesium. So can I choose another apple from the left? Cannot. You only can choose one apple from the left and one apple from the right. Huh? So you cannot choose this one already. So now right hand side got these two apples. Which apple we should choose? So when you want to choose the apple on the right hand side, make sure the apple is related to the left hand side. Like, can we choose magnesium oxide? Yes. At least you see magnesium and magnesium oxide, they are related. Both of them got Mg, right? They have something in common. These two apples, they got something in common. But if you choose copper, cannot. Why? This is magnesium, this is copper. Do they have anything similar? No, they are totally different at all. They are totally different. They are not related at all. So cannot. So that's why the first apple we choose is magnesium on the left and magnesium oxide on the right. Everyone let me know in the chat box, are you okay with how I choose these two apples? Let me know in the chat box, are you okay? Are you understand why I choose these two apples? Can I? Because they are related. Okay, so now everyone put your eyes on here. When you do the comparison from apple to apple, always go, always go from left hand side to the right hand side. Eh? So left hand side, go to right hand side. So you see, left to right, if you write, if you draw here, you see, no space ma. So you must go up here. You can go up, then come here. You can like this, huh? go up, then come here. You see? Left to the right. Mr. Martin, is it must go up? Can we go down like this? Can, you see? Left to the right. Or you can say left to the right. No problem. Why? As long as left to the right is perfectly fine. You want to go up or you want to go down? No problem. Okay, now everyone open your eyes and see what happened. On the left-hand side, the magnesium come alone. On the right-hand side, the magnesium got extra oxygen. So what happened? You can see already this fella. Magnesium go to gain oxygen already. Magnesium gain oxygen. Turn on. No oxygen become got oxygen. So your oxygen getting more now. So when magnesium gain oxygen, what is the process now? Go back to the table, everyone. We know according to the table, oxidation and reduction. This is oxygen. This is oxidation number. This is hydrogen. This is electron. So O and O, same letter, plus, isn't it? So when magnesium get extra oxygen, the process is oxidation. So you can say magnesium undergo oxidation. You can use the word undergo. If you don't want to write the word undergo, you also can make it in a past tense. You also can write magnesium is oxy. Dice. So oxidize, you can write O-X-I-D-I-S-E-D -E or O-X-I-D-I-Z-E-D. -E it's okay. The difference is that one is, U one is the UK English, another one is US American English. Uh, so it's one is the Britain English and one another one is American English. Both also acceptable. No matter you put S or Z, both also acceptable. Huh? So you can write Magnesium undergo oxidation, or you can write magnesium is oxidized. Either one. Eh? So can I write both? Don't do that. Write either one. You write this one or this one. Either one. Okay, so magnesium is done. 
So can we do the second apple to apple comparison? Yes. Let's choose another apple, everyone. Copper oxide, one apple from the left. Copper, one apple from the right, isn't it? Remember, when you do comparison, can we compare right to the left? Yes or no? Can we compare right to the left, everyone? Yes or no? Cannot, huh? I told you, sequence is important, everyone. Look back to the notes. Be careful with the sequence. Always compare the apple from the left to the right. Cannot go from the right to the left, huh? Come on. So left-hand side apple to the right-hand side. Okay, everyone, open your eyes and see. Left-hand side, copper come together with oxygen. Right-hand side, the copper don't have oxygen. Turn on. Here, got oxygen. Here, don't have oxygen. So oxygen disappeared. So copper oxide loses oxygen. Okay, copper oxide lose oxygen. So lose oxygen, what happened? We know that when O and O, same letter, plus, okay? When O and R, different letter, minus. So losing oxygen, the process is reduction process, right? Lose oxygen, so it's reduction. So you can write copper oxide undergo reduction. If you don't want to write copper oxide undergo reduction, you can put a past tense. Copper oxide is reduced. Also can finish, okay? So that is that is how it works, huh? Not very hard one. Not very hard, okay? So is this chemical reaction a redox reaction? Yes, there is reduction. There is oxidation. Reduction and oxidation happen at the same time. So it is a redox reaction. So I hope everyone can see how I do step by step how I do apple to apple comparison by using oxygen method. Okay, let me know in the chat box, guys. Are you okay with how to use oxygen method? Are you okay with it? Okay. So it's not very hard, isn't it? Okay, it's actually very, very easy. Okay. Yeah, Meilan, if let's say only one process occur, then it's not a redox. Let's say there is only oxidation occur, there's no reduction happening, then it is not a redox. Redox must have oxidation, must have reduction. You need both, yeah? All right, can we try another one more question together? Is it okay? Let's try another one more question together, yeah? Okay, so here, okay? PbO2 plus C become PbO and CO. Let's do this question, everyone. Come on, let's do apple to apple comparison, yeah? Okay, let's choose the first apple, everyone. PBO compare with, sorry, PBO2, sorry. PBO2 compare with PBO, right? Turn on. Because these two apple, one on the left, one on the right, and then they, they are related, right? You see something in common. Both of them have PB, lah, isn't it? Okay, some people say, sir, why don't we choose this one and this one? Both also got O. But you see, if you choose these two apples, something nonsense, right? How come the PB, how come the PB become C? Cannot, ma? No way all in sudden the PB become C. No such thing, right? PB all in sudden become C. What is it? Cannot. So that's why everything must always start with choosing the right apple. I keep mentioning about apple to apple comparison. It's so important because if you choose the wrong apple, everything is wrong. Let's start. Left hand side PBO2. How many O you got? 2 O. Right hand side PBO. How many O you have? 1 O. Okay, 2 O to 1 O. Lose O. Lah. PBO2 loses oxygen. So, what is the process? Loses oxygen. Reduction process. Yeah, PBO2 undergo reduction. That's it. Lah. Let's do the second apple to apple comparison, everyone. Left hand side carbon is a C. Right hand side carbon CO. This carbon don't have O, this carbon got one O. So you gain oxygen. Lah. So the carbon actually gains oxygen. So carbon undergo oxidation process. Finish. Is this a redox reaction? There is a reduction. There is an oxidation. So this chemical reaction, it is a it is a redox okay so that's it so when you understand this logic you shouldn't have a big problem yeah when you come to the oxygen method 
Yeah. All right. Now, uh, be careful. Uh, okay. Now you see. Okay. Now, uh, I can see some of you write the answer in the chat box. Now it's wrong already. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'll teach you how to write the whole thing. Okay. So you see, if you if you write in the words, if you write in the words, okay, I see some answer in the chat box. Uh, some answer in the chat box, right? Carbon undergo oxidation. If you write in words, can or cannot? Can. This carbon is the one that gain oxygen. So carbon undergo reduction, oxidation. So if you write carbon undergo oxidation. But just now I see in the chat box, uh, I see in the chat box here, Okay, someone is writing lead undergo reduction. Is this correct? The answer no, it's incorrect. Not lead. Because the one loose oxygen is not who is lead. Lead is PB only. But who loses oxygen? PBO2. PBO2. Okay, so PBO2 loses oxygen, not PB. So the one loose oxygen and undergo reduction is PBO2. So PBO2 undergo reduction. So if you want to go for the name, what's the name of PBO2? Huh? PB is called lead. O is called oxide. Later I'll help you to, later I'll teach you how to find the oxidation number later I'll teach you. Huh? But now I tell you first, PBO2, the PB here is lead 4. Lead 4 oxide. Uh, so lead four oxide is PBO2, undergo reduction. So because just now I seen some of some of students write lead undergo reduction. No, it's not the lead who undergo reduction. The one that losing oxygen is not the lead, is PBO2. PBO2 is the guy who lose oxygen. So PBO2, what's the name? Lead four oxide. Okay. So I hope you guys can understand uh, why, why, why you cannot write lead undergo reduction. Totally wrong. Okay. That's why it's not hard, isn't it? But trust me, many of you will make it wrong. Uh, okay. So these are some small, small details that you all have to be very careful. Okay, guys, let me know in the chat box. Are you okay? Are you okay with why I cannot write lead undergo reduction, but I must write lead for oxide? Are you okay with that? Okay. These are some small things. That's why I appreciate when you guys type the answer in the chat box, even if it's wrong, perfectly fine. At least we can learn something together, isn't it? At least we learn something together. It's okay to make mistakes. Uh, most importantly, we learn from that. Uh, how to get lead for oxide, I'll teach you later. I'll teach you later when we go for oxidation number. Okay, when we go for oxidation number, then I teach you why it's lead for. Uh, later, I'll teach you later. Step by step, no rush. Uh. Step by step. Okay, so we're done with it. Okay. Okay, so now, okay, let me go for another method. Huh? Okay, let me teach you another one more important thing. Huh? Okay, is this. Okay, before I go on with the hydrogen method, now I want to teach you another one more concept. Okay, in this chapter, in this chapter, you will keep on seeing these four words. One. In this chapter, you will keep on seeing these four words. Blah, 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 undergo oxidation. Blah, 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 undergo reduction. Okay, blah, blah, blah is our uh, oxidizing agent. And then blah, blah, blah is our reducing agent. You will keep on seeing these four words for the next few months. Yeah, you will keep on seeing these few words for the next few months. So these two words, we already covered like, oxidation reduction. So now I want to teach you what is oxidizing agent and what is reducing agent. So what is oxidizing agent? What is reducing agent? What is it? So when you see agent, agent means that somebody, somebody with extra or, or with special function. Example. Let's say in science, uh, in, in basic, in, in normal life, when I say tax agent, tax agent, what they do? They are agent who help you handling the tax, right? Tax agent, they are those people that can help you handle the tax. Travel agent, travel agent, what they are? They are those agent that can help you with something related with travel, right? Example, 
They can help you to book the air ticket. They can help you to arrange the bus. Okay, when you go on travel, isn't it? Uh, so they, 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 they can arrange some translator for you when you do your travel. Yeah, so these are travel agent. So what is oxidizing agent? So oxidizing, you see, oxidizing. So oxidizing means what? You let other people undergo oxidation. So oxidizing agent, what is their job? They help other people to undergo oxidation process. Reducing agent, what the agent do? They reducing other people. Reducing other people means what? They let other people undergo reduction process. They let other people undergo reduction process. That's it. Example, today, if I have a container, this is substance A, and this substance A you add with oxidizing agent. So what oxidizing agent do? Oxidizing agent, they are the agent that go to oxidize other people. So they oxidize other people means what? They let the substance A to undergo oxidation process. Yeah, they help substance A undergo oxidation process. That's what oxidizing agent do. Same thing, today I have a substance W. Substance W, I go to put in reducing agent. I mix reducing agent with substance W. So reducing agent, what they do? Reducing agent, they are the agent that help other people undergo reduction. So reducing agent will make the substance W to undergo reduction process. That's it. Okay, so make sure everyone know uh, what is oxidizing agent. Oxidizing agent let other people to undergo oxidation. Reducing agent let other people. Okay, actually not people lah, uh, it's chemical substance uh, but I just put it in a way that you can understand lah. Uh. So reducing agent help other people to undergo reduction. Come on, everyone, let me know in the chat box. Are you okay with what oxidizing agent and reducing agent do? Are you okay with that? Okay, so now you know already what is oxidizing agent and what is reducing agent and what they do. Now, the next thing is this. How to know who is oxidizing agent and who is reducing agent? So you see, we learned step by step one. How to know who is oxidizing or who is reducing agent? Look at it. In cap, you see, I put five star here. I put five star. Okay. Substance always act or behave as the agent for the opposite process that themselves undergo. Okay. All the cap, this cap in, in redox, uh, in this chapter in redox, uh, the chemical substance, they will become the agent for the opposite process that themselves undergo. What do I mean? Example, I am a substance A. I am substance A. I undergo oxidation process. Let's say when I undergo oxidation process, I will be the agent for the opposite process. What is the opposite process for oxidation? Reduction. So substance A is reducing agent. See that? Substance A is undergo oxidation process. Substance A automatic will become opposite agent, which is reducing agent. So we will always be the opposite agent for the process that we undergo. Okay, let's say another one, substance B. Substance B undergo reduction. So if substance B undergo reduction process, if substance B undergo reduction process, so substance B will be oxidizing agent. See that? You will always, always be the opposite agent. You will always be the opposite agent for the process that you undergo, okay? So example, I am substance W. I am, me, yeah, me. I am substance W. Substance W undergo oxidation process. When substance W undergo oxidation process, substance W automatic will become opposite agent. What is the opposite of oxidation? So reducing agent. See that? Very easy, right? Okay, simple as that. Substance Z. Substance Z undergo reduction process. Substance Z undergo reduction process. Substance Z will automatic become the agent that is opposite. So reduction, the opposite is oxidizing agent. Okay? So simple as that. So when you want to know what is the agent, you just need to know what process is happening. Okay? If this fuller undergo reduction, this 
filler will become oxidizing agent. If this filler undergo oxidation, this filler will become reducing agent. Simple as that. Okay. So I hope everyone can understand this. Huh? And you can just you can just go back and add this concept to what we learned just now. You see, let's say, huh? I use back another one more. Like, okay, I use back another one more example to do together. See, yeah, everyone, look at here. Zinc plus oxygen gas becomes zinc oxide. Yeah? Okay, let's combine all the knowledge that we learned today in this question. Okay, first and foremost, we need to balance the equation. Huh? First and foremost, we need to balance the equation first. One zinc on the left, one zinc on the right. So two oxygen on the left, one oxygen on the right. So it's not balanced. You have to put a two here. So when you put a two here, the zinc here will become two. Okay, so now we already have a balanced chemical equation. So you always need to make sure that the chemical equation is balanced before you do apple to apple comparison. So don't be so excited huh? when you get a question, directly do apple to apple comparison. Don't do that. Balance the chemical equation first. Then only you do your apple to apple comparison. Come on, everyone. Let's do apple to apple comparison. Let's say I have one apple called zinc on the left. So the right-hand side is zinc oxide. Lah. So that's it. So now what happened here, everyone? Follow me. On the left-hand side, the zinc come alone. On the right-hand side, the zinc got extra oxygen. Okay, guys. When you do apple to apple comparison, don't look at the number in front. Huh? This number in front only used to balance the equation. All the number in front only used to balance the equation. Don't need to look at it. So just compare zinc and zinc oxide. So zinc and zinc oxide, what happened? The zinc gains oxygen. So when zinc gain oxygen, zinc undergo oxidation process. So when zinc undergo oxidation process, anyone can tell me what is the agent, everyone? When zinc undergo oxidation process, what agent it is? Zinc is our reducing agent. True not? We learn, ma, isn't it? You will always be the opposite agent for the process that you undergo, isn't it? So, settle. All right. Next one. Can we do the second apple to apple comparison? Yes, why not? Oxygen compare with this one. Okay. So, you see? All right. So, some people say, sir. Just, just now the apple compare one time. Now you compare one more time again. I didn't tell you the apple cannot, I didn't say the apple cannot use two times, right? I didn't say that, right? I only say that you can choose one apple from the left and one apple on the right. I didn't say that you could, you cannot use the apple all over again. Can one. You can use the apple again, one. Huh? Okay, now you see, this is where a lot of students make mistake. This is where a lot of students make mistake. Here got two oxygen. Here, the oxygen also got two. So two oxygen from the left, two oxygen on the right. So no change. Wrong. Why? I told you, when you do the comparison, when you do apple to apple comparison, the number two in front, don't look at it. Don't look at the number in front. Those number in front only for balancing. So you should look at O2 and Z and O. The two in front, don't look at it. When you do apple to apple comparison, the number in front, don't look at it, please. Huh? Don't look at it. Okay, so now let's look at it. On the left-hand side, how many O? Two. On the right-hand side, how many O? One. So losing oxygen, right? Turn on. Two oxygen on the left, one oxygen on the right. Okay? So the O2 now actually loses oxygen. Lose oxygen is reduction. So when O2 undergo reduction, the O2 automatic become our oxidizing agent. So you will always be the opposite agent for the process that you undergo. Okay? So I just want you to get familiar with this process first. Okay? Just get yourself familiar with this entire process first. Okay? Okay, let me know in the chat box, guys. Are you okay with what is going on? Are you okay with what is going on? Not hard, huh? You just need to do step by step. You'll be fine. Okay, let's do one last cell test. Then we jump on to the hydrogen method. Is it okay? Now, cell test. So, cell test, you see here, cell test, huh? Okay, cell test. C plus CO2 become, two, become CO. Same thing when you get a question, always, always starting with 
balancing the equation. Let's balance the equation. Let's balance the equation first. Okay. One carbon, two carbon on the left, one carbon on the right. So you need to put a two to balance it. Lah. Okay. So oxygen, you have two oxygen on the left. You have two oxygen on the right. So settle. Lah. So now guys, I want you to do the apple to apple comparison. You just tell me four things. Okay. You just tell me in the chat box four things. Ah. Who undergo oxidation? Just tell me who undergo reduction, who is the oxidizing agent, and who is the reducing agent. I give you a I give you a three to five minutes to think about it. Okay, just tell me. Okay, who undergo oxidation? Okay, you can put a name, you can put a formula. Who undergo reduction process in this case? Tell me the name, tell me the formula, also can. Okay? Who is the oxidizing agent and who is the reducing agent? Eh? The answer can be name or can be formula. Okay, give you guys a three to five minutes to think about it. Okay, tick, tick. okay, I give you guys three to five minutes to try to do it and think about it. Okay, so if you know how it works, type the answer in the chat box, please. Eh? If you don't know how to do this question, put a cross in the chat box. At least you let me know that you don't know how to do this. Yeah, all right, at least I'm aware. Come, take your time. All right, very good. Okay, very good. Okay, so now let's see how it works. Huh? Okay, so how are we going to do the question? Same thing. Lah. Let's do your apple to apple comparison. Lah. So let's start with the first one. Choose one apple from the left. Compare one apple on the right first. Lah. So this is the first comparison, right? This is the first comparison. So on the left-hand side, the carbon... On the right hand side, CO, I remember I told you when you do apple to apple comparison, don't bother the number in front. Huh? Remember that. Okay, don't bother the number in front when you do the apple to apple comparison. The number in front only for balancing. Huh? So you compare C and CO. C and CO, what happened? Gain oxygen, right? You have more extra oxygen. So when carbon gain additional oxygen, carbon undergo oxidation. So the one undergo oxidation, you can write the formula C or you can write the name carbon. So when carbon undergo oxidation, what is the agent? Remember, you will always be the opposite agent for the process that you undergo. So when carbon undergo oxidation process, carbon will be our reducing agent. Is it okay? Yeah, you can write the name, you can write the formula. Okay, now let's do the second apple to apple comparison so second apple to apple comparison choose one apple from the left compare with the apple on the right eh? okay left and right compare so let me erase this so now co2 become co so co2 how many oxygen you have two co how many oxygen you have one remember don't look at the number in front eh? the number in front if you take two times o then it's wrong okay the number in front only for balancing purpose. You don't do you don't use the number in front when you do your apple to apple comparison. CO2 becomes CO. So losing oxygen. So when you lose oxygen, what process happening? Reduction, right? So who lose oxygen? CO2. CO2 lose oxygen. So CO2 lose oxygen. CO2 undergo reduction. So you, you can write the you can write the formula. You also can write the name carbon. Dioxide. So when CO2 undergo reduction, CO2 will be our oxidizing agent because I told you, you will always be the opposite agent for the process that you undergo. Huh? You will always be the opposite agent for the process that you undergo. So I don't think it's hard, right? I can see that in the chat box, majority of you can get the answer correctly, which is good. Yeah. So hope everyone can understand. I hope everyone can understand how it works. Okay? So it's not hard, but you must really, really get yourself familiar with this thing. Who undergo oxidation? Who is reducing agent? Who undergo reduction process? Who is oxidizing agent? These four, these four questions, they will keep on asking you for the next few months. Okay? So, so with that being said, we are all done with oxygen method. Let me know in the chat box, guys. Are you okay with how oxygen method works? Are you guys okay with it? 
it's actually quite easy. Uh, it's actually quite easy. Yeah, it's actually a very, very simple one. Uh, right. So now, when you understand the oxygen method, the subsequent method is easy. Uh, so we are done with oxygen method. We will spend the next 10 minutes. Uh, we will spend the next 10 minutes to go with the hydrogen method. Okay. So we already covered oxygen method. We will spend the next 10 minutes with hydrogen method. Okay. So let's do it. Okay, how to do hydrogen method? If you understand oxygen method, you shouldn't have a big problem with hydrogen method. Huh? If you fully understand oxygen method, you shouldn't have a big problem with hydrogen method. So hydrogen method, very easy. If you lose hydrogen, then it is oxidation. If you gain hydrogen, then it is reduction. Yeah. So hydrogen method is considered very rare. In SPF, I would say among four methods here, the one that is least popular, the least popular, the one they seldom ask in SPM is hydrogen method. Okay, uh, not popular, not popular, but we still need to know. So hydrogen method, I will use two examples for demonstration. I will use two examples as demonstration here. Let's start with hydrogen method. So hydrogen method, what we do, what we do, same thing. Okay, hydrogen method, you just focus on gain or lose hydrogen. That's it. Okay, we will use two examples for demonstration. I'll use two examples for demonstration. I see the first one. H2S plus chlorine become HCl plus sulfur. Okay, come. Let's do this. Huh? So same thing, when you get the question, always, always balance the equation. Always balance the equation first. Okay, so I balance it quickly. Yeah, I just go through quickly here. So balance already. So now let's do apple to apple comparison. H2S compare with who? Can we compare with HCl? Cannot. Why? Here you have H, here you have H. But S cannot become Cl, isn't it? There's no way the sulfur all in sudden become chlorine. No such thing. So it doesn't make sense. So we cannot choose this apple. Lah. Yeah. So what is the more proper apple? H2S versus S. You see why I choose these two apples? Here got sulfur, here got sulfur. You see something in common. You see something in common. So now let's look at it. Left hand side, the sulfur sticking with hydrogen. Right hand side, the sulfur come alone. So the hydrogen don't disappear. Here got hydrogen. Okay, here don't have hydrogen, isn't it? So what happened? H2S loses hydrogen so when you lose hydrogen what process is is taking place lose hydrogen look back to the table look back to the table we have lose hydrogen is oxidation process right so when you undergo oxidation process what agent you are reducing agent is okay reducing agent that's it okay so not very hard right i so i keep telling you all if you understand oxygen method, you shouldn't have a big problem at all when it comes to hydrogen method. Yeah? Okay, come. Let's do the second apple to apple comparison. Here you have chlorine. Here you have hydrochloric acid. So these two apples. Okay? This one got Cl. This also got Cl. Huh? Okay, on the left hand side, the Cl come alone. On the right hand side, on the right hand side, the Cl sticking with H, isn't it? So gain hydrogen. Lah. So what happened? You can see this chlorine, Cl2, gains hydrogen. So when you gain hydrogen, the chlorine undergo reduction process, right? So chlorine undergo reduction process. So when chlorine undergo reduction process, chlorine will be all oxidizing agent. That's all. Okay? So very easy, isn't it? If you understand oxygen method, hydrogen method is quite easy as well, isn't it? All right, okay, now, now sometimes, sometimes the question might go a bit weird. Sometimes, uh, sometimes the question might be a two in one question. Okay, what do I mean by two in one question? Sometimes you might need to use oxygen and hydrogen method combined together. Now you see, so far all the examples that we covered, they are purely using oxygen method or they purely using hydrogen method, isn't it? We only use oxygen method or we only use hydrogen method. But sometimes 
in some special occasion, sometimes in some special case, we might use oxygen method and hydrogen method together. And you not even need to memorize. You no need to memorize. You just follow the flow. You just follow the flow of the question. Just follow the flow, not even need to memorize. Okay, I give you an example here. Okay, all right, like this. Okay, ammonia plus copper oxide become nitrogen gas, water and copper, let's say. Yeah, so this is the chemical equation. Huh? No need to memorize. Huh? Okay, again, so when you get the question, what is the first thing we should do, everyone? Not apple to apple comparison. Huh? Don't do that. Huh? Always balance the equation first. Remember that. Yeah, don't start to do apple to apple comparison before your equation is even balanced. So balance equation, I, ho I, I, I hope you can do. I hope you know how to do it. Huh? Okay, I hope you guys know how to do the balance equation yourself. Huh? I just do quickly. Okay, so now already I already have a balance equation. Okay, now let's do apple to apple comparison all together. Come on, let's do apple to apple comparison all together. Huh? Okay, left hand side. Let's say I choose one apple, ammonia. So ammonia, you should compare with who? Okay, ammonia, you should compare with nitrogen, right? True not, because why? Here got N, here got N, ma. isn't it? All right. You won't choose ammonia with water. Why? Because nitrogen cannot all in sudden become hydrogen, isn't it? And nitrogen cannot all in sudden become oxygen. No such thing. And you won't choose ammonia and copper. Why? Ammonia and copper has no relationship at all, isn't it? They are totally not related at all. Ammonia and copper, nothing in common. Nothing similar. Cannot. So that's why I always mention choose the right apple first. Always, always start, always begin with choosing the right apple. If you if the apple you choose wrongly, the whole thing will be affected. Nah? The whole thing will be affected. Yeah. If you choose the wrong apple in the first place, yeah. So please be very careful with it. Yeah. So starting with the right uh, selection first, huh? starting with the right selection. Okay. So now, okay. So let's go for the next one. Okay, so now, on the left-hand side, nitrogen come together with H. On the right-hand side, the nitrogen don't have H. Lah. So what happened? Ammonia loses hydrogen. So ammonia undergo oxidation process. Ammonia is our reducing agent, isn't it? So very easy. Lah. Okay, so now let's look at the second apple-to-apple -apple comparison. Come on, copper oxide, one apple from the left. Compare with who? Copper, right? True not. You see something in common, isn't it? Here got copper, here got copper. Okay. So now if you go to here, what happened? Left hand side, the copper got oxygen. Right hand side, the copper don't have oxygen. So the copper oxide loses oxygen. So when you lose oxygen, what happened? Reduction process, right? Losing oxygen is reduction process. When you undergo reduction process, you are oxidizing. Agent. That's it. Okay. So, guys, if you look at this question, if you look at this question, okay, do you notice that I not even try to memorize? I not even try to try to push for it. But do you notice that this question actually we use hydrogen method here and we use oxygen method here? Can you see that? I not even memorize. I not even tell you that oh, you must use this method. You must use that method. No, right? I just follow the flow. I just follow the flow only. Then you can see, okay, that's it. All right? So one more thing. Some people will say, sir, what about this? The water. So it's okay. Just let it be there. No rule saying that you need to use all the apple, right? See, this is apple. This is apple. This is apple. This is apple. Okay? If you notice, if you notice, this apple, is not being compared, right? This apple, we don't use it to do comparison. It's okay. No rules saying that you need to use all the apple, right? Or not. Just like I told you, you need to choose one apple from the left, one apple from the right. That's it. I didn't say you need to use all the apples, right? I didn't say you need to use all the apple. So sometimes you will see like the apple, you don't use it. Uh, like sometimes there are some apples 
you don't do the comparison. So you don't feel bad. Oh my God, how come I got one apple? I don't use it. Is it something wrong? Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong one. Let it be. Just let it be. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. No rule saying that you need to use all the apples given. No, no such thing. All right. So is this still a redox? Although it's a two in one question. Of course, of course. This is oxygen method. This is hydrogen method. Doesn't matter. You got reduction, you got oxidation. So it is still a redox. Understand? Uh, no, not to say that you must use the same method. Then only it's a redox. No such thing. As long as you have reduction process, as long as you have oxidation process, they happen at the same time, it is still a redox reaction. Okay, guys, let me know in the question. Let me know in the chat box. Are you okay with this two-in-one question? Are you okay with this two-in-one question? Can you see, guys, I not even need to memorize or oh, I must use oxygen method. Okay, I must use hydrogen. No, right, turn on. I say, go with the flow. You just follow the flow. You just do your apple to apple comparison. Then you can see, or oh, sometimes I need to use oxygen method. Sometimes I need to use hydrogen method. You not even need to memorize. Like in this question, only after we do the question, only I notice, oh, we're using oxygen and hydrogen method. We only know that after we completed the question. That's why I say you don't need to memorize. You don't need to crack your head or say, shit, which method I should use. No need one. Just follow the flow. Follow the flow. You will be fine. Yeah? Okay, done. So we are done with oxygen method. We are done with hydrogen method. Okay? So now, uh, let me see whether there's any question we can do. Is there any question out there? Okay. All right. Okay, this one we can do later. Ah, uh, here, this one. Okay, let's do two questions together before we move on and learn the last part for today. Yeah? Okay, come, let's look at this. This is a question from Perlis 2022 trial exam paper. Do you want to try this question? Come on, just try it up, this question, and let me know the answer in the chat box. What is the reaction that takes place for copper oxide? What is the reaction okay, that takes place as copper oxide? So copper oxide, see here? Let's choose apple to apple comparison. CuO and Cu. CuO and Cu. Uh. CuO and Cu. Isn't it? All right. Okay, so I get a question. See, sir, can we use CuO and H2O to do apple to apple comparison? Let's use common sense. If you use CuO and H2O, do you see they gain or lose oxygen? No. And one more thing. Why is impossible you choose these two apple? Why it is impossible you choose these two apple? Common sense. This is copper. Where is the copper? How come the copper all in sudden become hydrogen? Cannot match or not? There's no way copper all in sudden convert to hydrogen. No such thing. So that's why you cannot choose copper oxide to compare with water. That's why I keep telling you all, choosing apple, you must choose carefully. Okay? Uh, so why I choose CuO and Cu? Both of them got copper. Ma? So on the left-hand side, copper got O. On the right-hand side, copper don't have O. So when you, when you lose oxygen, so it is reduction process, isn't it? When we lose oxygen, it is reduction process. So it's actually quite easy, isn't it? So if we finish already, yeah? Okay. So I don't think it's hard. I don't think it's hard. Okay. All right. So now... Okay, let's go on and learn something new. Huh? Okay, now we will go on with the last ever method for today. All right. So we have four methods. We covered two methods already. I already taught you oxygen method. I already taught you something about hydrogen method. Okay. So now we will go for the most challenging method out there. Okay. So now for the next 30 to 30, 30 to 40 minutes, we will learn the most challenging method out there which is called oxidation number method. Okay, This method is very interesting, very, very interesting and very, very challenging. Eh? So oxygen method is the most popular method out there. Okay, We have four methods. The most popular method that we'll ask in SPM is oxidation number method. Okay, They seldom ask hydrogen method in SPM. They seldom ask oxygen method in SPM. Why? 
too easy, too simple. Normally, they will ask oxidation number method. Yeah, oxidation number method is much, much, much more challenging. Okay, oxygen oxidation number method can use in many condition. Okay, so today, no matter the question got hydrogen or not, no matter the question got oxygen or not, you can use oxidation number method. Uh, oxidation number method can use in all situation. You see, oxygen method cannot. You only can use oxygen method if the question got oxygen, isn't it? You only can use hydrogen method if the question got hydrogen. Oxidation number method can use in all situation. If the question got oxygen, can we use oxidation number method? Can. If the question got hydrogen, can we use oxidation number method? Can. If the question don't have oxygen, the question don't have hydrogen, can we use oxidation number method? Can. So I hope you all can see yourself. You can use oxidation number method in whatever situation. In whatever situation, you can use oxidation number method. That's why it is very powerful. Yeah. So now I will now I will use the next 15 to 20 minutes to teach you what is oxidation number. Okay. This is super, super important. I need you to pay attention. And after the explanation, if you still don't understand, please ask and ask today. Okay, I want you to be very clear what is oxidation number all about toward today lesson. Huh? Okay, when today lesson ended, I want you to be very clear what is oxidation number matter all about. Yeah, all right. So come, let's start. There are total four rules that can help you to find oxidation number. So today, if I want to know what is the oxidation number in the chemical equation, there are four rules, four principles to help you to find the oxidation number. So follow me. Yeah? Rule number one, oxidation number for element is always, always zero. Okay, Today, when you have element, the oxidation number for the element is always zero. What is element? Element is referred to anything made of one species. Anything made of one species that is called element. Example, zinc. Zinc, how many species you have? Only one, right? You only got zinc, nothing else. So only one species. So zinc is an element. So the oxidation number for zinc is zero. Is it okay? Uh, so when you have any element, the oxidation number is always zero. Next one, aluminium. Aluminium, is it an element? Yes. You only have aluminium, nothing else, right? You only have aluminium not, and nothing else. So aluminium is an element. So when you have element, the oxidation number is zero. Now, the next one is tricky, O2. So this one is this one where this is where some students start to get blurred already. O2. So O2, how many species we have, everyone? One species only. Although you have two oxygen, but they are the same type, right? They are all oxygen or not. This is O. This is O. So although you have two oxygen out there, but they are same species, right? Both of them are same species. What species they are? The O. So when you have same species, they are always element. So for element, the oxidation number is zero. Yeah. So oxygen is element. So the oxidation number is zero. Okay, one more. Sulfur. S8, let's say. S8. Don't get frightened by the eight. Although you have eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have eight of it. But all of them are S, right? All of them are sulfur. So how many species you have? Only one species, right? All of them are sulfur. They are same species. So when you have same species, they are element. So when they are element, the oxidation number is zero. So let me know in the chat box, guys. Are you okay with rule number one? Are you okay with it? Oxidation number for element is zero. So I want all of you to know what is element. Anything made of one species is called element. So when you have only one species, you are element. So your oxidation number is zero. Okay, rule number two. Uh, rule number two. Oxidation number for ion is always same as their charge. Okay, so what is ion? We learned about ion in form four. Chapter 2, uh, in Form 4, Chapter 2, you learn about atoms, you learn about molecules, you learn about ions. Uh. So ion is somebody who got charged. 
So oxidation number of ion is always same as the charge. What, 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 what does it mean? If I know the charge for certain substance, the oxidation number is exactly same as the charge. So if you know the charge for somebody, the oxidation number is exactly same as the charge. Okay, example, sodium Na+. plus. So do you know the charge for this fella? Yes. So what is the oxidation number? Plus one. Is it okay? Magnesium, Mg2+. Plus. Do you know the charge for magnesium? Yes. So when the magnesium, the charge is Mg2+, plus oxidation number? Plus two. Aluminium, do we know the charge for aluminium? Yes, Al3+. Plus. So when we know the charge for aluminium, what is the oxidation number? Plus three. See that? When you know the charge for somebody, the oxidation number is the same. But got, got some small difference. Right? See, when we write charge in chemistry, we write number, then only the sign, right? We write the number, then only the sign. But when you go for oxidation number, oxidation number, you just do like how you write a positive integer. You just write like how you write positive number in mathematics. You write the sign, then only the number. Is okay? So oxidation number, just copy back the charge. If you know the charge of that fella, okay? All right. So next one. Let's say, yeah, uh, okay. It's chlorine, Cl minus. So do we know the charge for Cl? Yes, the charge for Cl is Cl minus. So what is the oxidation number? Negative one. See that? Oxygen, what is the charge? O. 2 minus, right? Okay, oxygen, the charge is O2 minus. So what is the oxidation number for oxygen? Negative 2. See that? So when you know the charge, you will know the oxidation number. As simple as that. So where these, where are these charge coming from? You learn all these charge in your form 4, chapter 3. So if there is any one of you here, you still don't know these charges, you need to do something about it. Go to revise your form 4, chapter 3. Form 4, chapter 3, that is a list of positive ion. There is a list of negative ion. You need to memorize it. If you cannot memorize it, I always mention what to do. Take a piece of paper and copy it. Take a piece of paper, copy the list of ion. You need to know that because if you not even know the list of ion, you are in deep trouble. You are really, really in deep trouble if you don't know the list of the positive and negative ion. All right. Uh, for those who don't know this, uh, you might you might also check out from my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel from four chapter three. I do have a video on that lah, on the list of ion. It's very important. Lah. If you don't know this charge correctly, you are in deep trouble. Okay. So that's it. Lah. Oxidation number for ion, of course, you need to memorize all of them. And you should memorize these scenes from 4. You should memorize these ion scenes from 4, not now. You should memorize these ion scenes from 4. And it's not too late, okay, if you start today, okay? It's not too late to start in form 5, huh? but you have to. You have to memorize the list of ion, okay? So that's it, okay? And then remember... You need to show the sign of oxidation number all the time, which means when you have oxidation number, you need to show the sign. No matter it is positive or negative, you need to show the sign. Because a lot of students, a lot of students, when they write this oxidation number, they follow mathematics. Mathematics normally don't need to show the positive sign, isn't it? Mathematics normally we don't show the positive sign. Cannot, huh? when you come to oxidation number in chemistry, in chemistry, the oxidation number, you need to show the sign. So some student will say, Sir, what if aluminium, the oxidation number is plus 3, but I forget to put the plus, I only put 3. What happens, sir? Zero. No mark at all. No mark at all. Okay? So I don't want you to lose the mark just because you forgot to put a sign. Okay? I don't want you to do that. I always mention one. You for okay? I always mention, don't be forgetful one. You forget to put the sign the examiner will forget to give you the mark. I always mention that one. Don't be forgetful. You forget, they will forget also. You forget to put the sign, they will forget to give you the mark. You will get zero. So please be careful. Huh? So this is the second one. Oxidation number for ion is same as the charge of the ion. 
Okay, guys, let me know in the chat box, are you okay with rule number two? Okay, so we learned two rules already, yeah, guys. Rule number one, element. Oxidation number is zero. Rule number two, ion. The oxidation number exactly same as the charge. For ion, the oxidation number copy back the charge. Okay. So let's we have two more rules to go. Rule number three. Oxidation number for oxygen is always, always, always negative two. For oxygen, the oxidation number is always negative two. Example is here. Let's say I have magnesium oxide. This oxygen here is negative two. I have aluminium oxide. The oxygen here. It is negative two. I have water. Water inside got oxygen. The oxygen here is negative two. I got carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide inside got oxygen. The oxygen here is negative two. See that? Oxidation number for oxygen. Okay, the oxidation number for oxygen. It's always, always negative two. Okay, you see? Oxidation number for oxygen is always, always negative 2. But there are two special cases. There are two special exceptions. Two special cases. Huh? Special case number 1, O2. So when you have O2, which is element, when you only have O, nothing else. Huh? When you only have elements, when you only have O, nothing else, you are element. Element, the oxidation number is? zero so today if let's say i got o2 o2 what is the oxidation number for o zero o3 what is the oxidation number for the o still zero isn't it because you only have o right nothing else you only have o nothing else so it's element now watch out here co2 although here got o2 is it an element yes or no is it an element everyone yes or no is this O2 element? Yes or no? The answer is no, huh? because you have O and C, isn't it? You have, you, you have O and something else. So it's not an element. Element is like this. Only got O, nothing else. Only got O, only got one species. How many species you have here? C got one species. O got one species. When you got two species, you are not an element. So when you are not an element, this O is not zero. Is it okay? So please be very, very careful. Okay? Uh, so this O is not an element. So it's negative two. So very easy. Yeah? Oxygen always, always, always negative two. Except when they are element. When the oxygen come alone, when you only have O, nothing else, the oxygen is element, then it is zero. Other than that, oxygen is always, always, always negative two. Yeah. So please be careful with it. Huh? Okay. So another special case is this. If you today you have H2O2, H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide. The name is called hydrogen peroxide. Actually, it's what? It's a water, but water only got one O. Ma. This water got two oxygen. Uh, H2O2 is actually the water that got two oxygen. Uh, so H2O2 is called hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, the oxygen here is not negative two. It is negative one. Okay, so very easy. Huh? Oxygen is always negative two except these two special cases. Except element, which is zero, and hydrogen peroxide, which is negative one okay so as simple as that okay you understand this you'll be good okay all right so hope, hopefully you all, all can understand huh? okay now we go for the last rule then we will combine all the concept together huh? okay let's go for the last concept last rule okay so the last rule rule number four the last one already yeah oxidation number for hydrogen is always plus one hydrogen is always always plus one Oxygen is always, always minus two. Example. Okay, example. Huh? Water. 
water got hydrogen inside, so it is plus one. Hydrochloric acid. Okay, we learned about acid, right? In form four, chapter six, huh? Hydrochloric acids got H inside. So when you have H, it's plus one. Okay, sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is also an acid. Sulfuric acid got H also. The H is always plus one. See that? When you have hydrogen, the oxidation number is plus one. That's it. Very easy one. Okay. Oxidation number of hydrogen is always, always plus one, except two special cases. Same thing, huh? except two special cases. Today, if the hydrogen only come alone, you only have H, nothing else. You only have H, you only have one species. You only have H, nothing else. So it's element. So when you have element, the oxygen, the hydrogen is zero. Okay. Uh, so for example, today I got hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas only have H, nothing else. So it's element. So when hydrogen is element, it is not plus one. Huh? It is zero. Okay. Next one. When you have metal hydride, what is metal hydride? Metal hydride is the combination of metal and hydrogen. When metal and hydrogen combine together, we call them as metal hydride. Example. Sodium combined with hydrogen. Sodium is a metal. Hydrogen is hydrogen. So when metal combined with hydrogen, this is called a metal hydride. If you don't know how to spell the name, doesn't matter. Eh? Okay? All right. So magnesium combined with hydrogen. Magnesium is a metal hydrogen. Metal combined with hydrogen, so it is a metal hydride. So when you have metal hydride, the hydrogen inside here, they are not plus one. So they are negative one. So special case, see that? Hydrogen always, always, always plus one. But there are two special case. When the hydrogen come alone, is element, so zero. When hydrogen combined with metal, they are metal hydride. So they are negative one. Okay, finish. That is everything you need to know. Okay, let me make a quick summary for you. Huh? Okay, so they are, so oxidation number method is the most powerful method among four. Okay. So why oxidation number method is very powerful? Because you can use oxidation number method in any situation. You can use oxidation number method in any situation. Okay, so there are four rules that can help you to find the oxidation number. There are four rules to find the oxidation number. Rule number one, oxidation number for element is zero. Okay, what is element? Anything made of one species, it's element. Uh, element, the oxidation number is zero. Rule number two, Oxidation number for ion is exactly same as the charge of the ion. Is okay? So when I know the ion, what is the charge, I will know what is the oxidation number. Magnesium, Mg2+, plus, oxidation number, plus 2. Aluminium, Al3+, plus, oxidation number, plus 3. Rule number 3. Oxidation number for oxygen is always negative 2, except two special cases, O2. O2 is element because you only have O, nothing else. So when you have element, it's zero. Second, H2O2. H2O2 is called hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, the oxygen here is not negative two. It is negative one. Rule number four. Oxidation number for hydrogen is always plus one. Eh? Oxidation number for hydrogen is always, always plus one, except two special cases. The first one, hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas, you only have H, nothing else. So you are element. So when you are element, oxidation number is zero. Number two, when you are metal hydride. What is metal hydride? When the metal combine with hydrogen, you will get metal hydride. So metal hydride, the hydrogen is how much? Anyone remember this? Type in the chat box. When you have metal hydride, the hydrogen, how much is it? Negative one. See that? So if you know this, okay, 
If you know these four rules, you will be fine. Yeah, if you know these four rules, you'll be fine. Okay, now let's combine all the knowledge that we learned together into question. Okay, let's combine all the knowledge that we learned today and we will use three examples to demonstrate that. Huh? Okay, come on, everyone. Listen carefully. I need you to pay attention and follow me, please. Follow me, huh? First one. 2Fe2 plus plus Cl2 become 2Fe3 plus plus 2Cl minus. Huh? Don't memorize, huh? Do not ever memorize this equation. Okay. So when you're given this equation, let's say I want you to use oxidation number method. Let's say uh, this question, I want you to use oxidation number method to do the apple to apple comparison. Okay, follow me everyone. To do oxidation number method, first and foremost, list out all the oxidation number. List out all their oxidation number first. So everyone follow me and I want you to participate everyone. What is oxidation number for Fe2 plus everyone? What is oxidation number for the Fe2 plus plus 2, uh, isn't it? Because when you know the charge of the ion, the oxidation number just use back the charge, isn't it? And don't bother the number in front, remember? Remember, all the number in front only for balancing. All the number in front only for balancing. Don't use it for apple to apple comparison. Okay, very good, ladies and gentlemen. Guys, what is oxidation number for the chlorine here? Chlorine, what is the oxidation number, everyone? Zero, uh, why? You only have Cl and nothing else. So you are element. So when you are element oxidation number, zero. Lah. Good job, everyone. Well done. So the here, Fe3 plus oxidation number, copy back the charge plus three law, isn't it? Very easy. Lah. Isn't it? Very easy. Lah. When I know the charge, I just copy back the charge for the oxidation number. And remember, ah, oxidation number need to show the sign. Okay. No matter it is positive or negative, you need to show the sign. Okay, what is the oxidation number for the Cl? Here the Cl got charged. When the Cl got charged, copy back the charge. Negative one. It's okay. So now I had successfully list out all the oxidation number. I had successfully list out all the oxidation number. Now I just do my apple to apple comparison. Let's do my apple to apple comparison. Iron on the left, iron on the right, isn't it? Oxidation number plus two become plus three. Plus two to plus three, what happened? Okay, everyone look back to our table. Come on, a table. Huh? This is oxidation. This is reduction. Okay, so these are four different methods. First method, look at oxygen. Second method, oxidation number. Third method, hydrogen. Fourth method, electron isn't it so same letter o and o same letter plus o and o same letter plus o and h different letter minus o and e different letter minus here everything the ballet okay so what happened everyone now in this question we are focusing on oxidation number method right we're focusing on oxidation number method so now oxidation number plus two to plus three. Plus two to plus three, what happened? Oxidation number O is oxidation, N is number, I put short form. Huh? Oxidation number plus two to plus three, increase, right? So not, plus two to plus three. Plus two become plus three. Oxidation number getting more, huh? more means increase. Huh? When oxidation number increases, it is oxidation process. So you know already, oxidation process is taking place. So we have reducing agent, isn't it? Okay, when the substance undergo oxidation process, so it is a reducing agent. Lah. All right. So now, if the question asks you in words, who undergo oxidation process, and you go to write Fe undergo oxidation process, wrong. Huh? Who undergo oxidation process? The one undergo oxidation process is what you see? Fe2 plus become Fe3 plus. So the one undergo oxidation process is Fe2 plus. So you can write Fe2 plus. Okay. And anything got charged must put the word ion. Fe2 plus ion undergo oxidation process. Or if you want to put in words, iron 2 ion. See that? 
So please be careful what you cannot write. You cannot write Fe undergo oxidation. Okay, no, because the one undergo oxidation is who? The one undergo oxidation is this fella. This fella, are you Fe? No, you are Fe2 plus. So Fe and Fe2 plus is two different things. So you have to be very, very careful. Are you okay, Arifa? Because I see you type this in the chat box. I'm glad you type it so everyone can learn together. Are you okay, Arifa? Can I? You cannot write Fe undergo oxidation. No, because the one undergo oxidation is this fella, Fe2 plus, not Fe. Yeah? So no worry, I'll teach you more and more and more and more on this by next lesson. Huh? But today, just we just keep, we just start warm up first. Huh? Okay, all right. So it's okay. Huh? So for now, I just want you to know that oxidation number increase. So it is oxidation process. When you undergo oxidation process, you are reducing agent. That's it. That's good enough for today. Huh? Okay, let's do the second apple to apple comparison, everyone. Fluorine, zero become negative one. When the oxidation number changes from zero to negative one, what happened? Oxidation number decreasing, isn't it? Oxidation number decreases. When oxidation number decreases, what happened, everyone? Oxidation number decreases, so it's reduction process. When oxidation number decreases, reduction process takes place. So when reduction process takes place, what happened? Chlorine undergo reduction process. So fluorine is oxidizing agent. Okay, finish. Okay, so I hope you all can see how powerful it is for the oxidation number method. You see, oxidation number method is super powerful. One. Okay, very, very powerful. Okay, we try one more. We try one more example together. Yeah, we try one more example together. This is a zinc. This is a bromine. This is a zinc bromide. Okay, so now I have one chemical equation already. So first and foremost, balance it first. Uh. Balance the equation. Uh. Allow me to remind you all. Don't do anything. Don't do apple to apple comparison before you even balance the equation. Yeah. So now we have a balanced equation ready. Okay, first of all, everyone, list out the oxidation number together. I want your participation. Do it together. Can anyone tell me what is oxidation number for zinc on the left-hand side here? What is oxidation number for zinc on the left? Zero, ah. Uh. Not ZN2 plus, uh, no, uh, they didn't show us the charge. Uh, and then does this zinc come alone? When zinc come alone, you are element. So when you are element, the oxidation number is zero. Okay, bromine. What is oxidation number for bromine? Zero as well. Why? You only have BR, right? Nothing else. You only have BR, nothing else. So you are element. Okay. What is oxidation number for the zinc on the left on the right hand side? So here, everyone, zinc bromide. If you cut it, you should know zinc is Zn two plus, right? The Br here is Br minus. Am I right? True not? Okay. They purposely hide the charge. They don't show us the charge. They don't show us. They hide the charge, but we should know Zn two plus Br minus. We should know that. So when I know the charge for zinc. The oxidation number, copy back the charge, huh? ZN2 plus, oxidation number plus 2. Huh? BR, BR, we know the charge is BR minus. So oxidation number, copy back the charge, negative 1. I hope everyone know how I find all these charges, how I get all these oxidation number. So that's why knowing the right charge is important. Today, if anyone of you here, you thought ZN is ZN plus, gone already. The whole question gone. Okay? Uh, today, if anyone of you here thought the bromide here, the charge should be Br, let's say 2 minus, gone case. The whole question wrong already. That's why knowing the charge is so important. Okay, And you should know this charge since form 4. So now after I list out all the oxidation number correctly, now I do my apple to apple comparison. Come on, apple to apple comparison. How to go about it, zinc. Zinc go from 0 to plus 2. So 0 to plus 2, oxidation number increase. So when oxidation number of the zinc increase, zinc undergo oxidation. Am I right? So when zinc undergo oxidation process, zinc is our reducing agent. Isn't it? Very easy, isn't it? Very easy. Okay. 
Next one, let's look at another, another apple to apple comparison. So another apple is bromine compared with the BR here. Here the BR, zero. Here the BR, negative one. So zero to negative one, the oxidation number go down, right? Oxidation number for the bromine go down. So when bromine, the oxidation number go down, bromine undergo reduction, isn't it? When oxidation number decreases, it is a reduction process. So when bromine undergo reduction process, bromine is our oxidizing agent. Okay, finish. Okay, so you see, that's how it works. If you're able to list all the oxidation number correctly, you know how to do your apple to apple comparison. Everything is easy. Everything is easy. Okay, last one. You see the self-test, you see? Aluminium. On the left hand side is element right because only aluminium come alone so element zero on the right hand side aluminium al3 plus plus three zero to plus three oxidation number go up oxidation reducing agent you see that yeah same thing so second apple to apple comparison oxygen here only got o nothing else element zero here the oxygen is negative two because we learned before rule number three rule number three oxidation number for oxygen is always Negative two, right? Oxidation number for oxygen is always negative two, except element, right? Element is zero. Lah. Other than that, oxygen is negative two. Zero to negative two, oxidation number decrease, reduction process, oxidizing agent. So if you know how it works, it's not very hard. Okay? So let's do one last question. Okay, a two, two question. We do two. Is it two? Yeah, yeah I think we have two questions here we can do together. Huh? Okay, two question, quick one here. Okay, two question. Huh? All right, guys, I would like you all to participate. The first question is coming from Penang. What is the oxidation number change for hydrogen? Hydrogen on the left and hydrogen on the right. What is the change in the oxidation number? Oxidation number for hydrogen on the left to the right. What is the change of the oxidation number, everyone? From the left to the right. Okay, good job. Okay, all right. So let's do together, can we? Okay, on the left hand side, this hydrogen come with a charge, right? Turn on. So when the hydrogen come with a charge, so when hydrogen come with a charge, so remember when you given the charge, when you given the charge, the oxidation number must follow back the charge, right? Last one. Am I right? Okay. Why is not zero? Because this hydrogen they go give you the charge. They got give us the charge. Okay, so it's when they give us the charge, oxidation number same as the charge. Huh? This hydrogen on the right, this hydrogen only H come alone, nothing else. Do they give you the charge? No. So it's an element. So when it's element, so it's zero. Plus one become zero. So plus one become zero. The answer is C. Okay. Not hard, but some of you who are careless, maybe will choose the answer A. Some of you who are careless, maybe you'll choose the answer A, but it's not, yeah? All right, so one more. Okay, what is the change in oxidation number for chlorine in this case, everyone? This is MRSM trial exam paper. This is MRSM trial exam paper. So what is the change in oxidation number for your chlorine on the left and the right? Come on, let's try this. Okay, on the left hand side, okay, on the left hand side, this chlorine come alone, right? Cl come alone, don't have any friend. You are element. So when you're element, you are zero. On the right hand side here, you have FeCl3. Okay. So FeCl3, we know the Cl inside. What is the charge? Cl minus, right? We know the charge for Cl. It's Cl minus. So when I know Cl minus, the oxidation number follow back the charge. Cl minus, so it should be minus one. So zero on the left, minus one on the right. Zero to minus one. That's it. Okay. So with that being said, okay, we are all done with the oxidation number method. But of course, oxidation number method, there are some other special tricky k question which they can ask, which we will do more and more by next lesson. Huh? Okay?
but let's do a one minute summary what we learned today. So today we started with the concept of redox. So what, what is redox? Reduction and oxidation happen at the same time. Huh? You have oxidation, you have reduction. These two processes happen at the same time. So it is a redox. How many methods that can use to tell us that we have oxidation or reduction process? Four methods. Yeah, but we cover three only. Yeah? Today we only learn three. First method is oxygen method. Second method is hydrogen method. Third method is oxidation number method. The last method is electron method. But we didn't touch anything about electron method today. Huh? So make sure you know how to memorize the plus, plus, minus, minus, how to do the table, how to memorize the same letter. Look at the first letter. The first letter is the same put plus. The first letter, they are different, put minus. So use that method to help you to memorize, yeah? So no matter which method you are using, you must do apple to apple comparison. Eh? Choose the right apple. Choose one apple from the left, one apple from the right-hand side. Sometimes there are some apple that you don't use at all for comparison. It's okay one. It's okay one. Sometimes the same apple, you need to compare two times. It's perfectly fine. No rule saying that the apple only can use one time. No such rule. No rule saying that you need to use all the apples. No. Sometimes some of the apple, we don't use it. Perfectly fine. Yeah? All right. So among the four methods, the most powerful method is oxidation number method. Because why? You can use in any situation. Any situation also can use one. Oxidation number method. Yeah? All right. So I hope you learned something today. I hope everything is good so far for today, right? Let me know in the chat box, how's everything for the first lesson of your Form 5 syllabus? How's everything? Okay, good. All right. So if you, as long as you follow exactly what I tell you step by step, you'll be fine, okay? And remember like what I say, if anything, you're not sure, you are unclear, you're not you, you, you're not really confirmed, feel free to ask me anytime, okay? All right, so I think that's all for today. Yeah, I'll send the notes to the group later on and I'll see you guys again by next lesson, yeah?